Well, hello. Good morning. What a strange time we've been having. Everything's changed, hasn't it? All our identities and everything that we, we knew and thought that was normal. We've either not been working or incredibly busy. All our rhythms and our ways of living have uh, completely changed. And it's a time when lots of people have been thinking about reaching out to God. Is there a God? Perfectly natural. There's been a lot of sociological um, research in the last decade about emergencies and people's belief in God. They're expecting to find that people believe less in God. But in fact, the opposite is true. It's been shown that the closer you live to an earthquake zone, the far more likely you are to have a personal belief in God. A research in 2006 with students in Michigan, um, some they told uh, all about death and others they kept kind of neutral. But all those who've been exposed to thoughts of danger and death all profess to having a growth in their faith, uh, some who hadn't had faith before. In New Zealand, uh, immediately after the earthquake in 2011, it was noted that people who lived in the earthquake zone uh, were far more likely to come to faith in a god. Even Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud, they noted, well their belief was that religion had been uh, evolving to fulfil that role that we need of going to somebody higher than ourselves in moments of crisis. And surely this has been a crisis and is still a crisis and it's been noted uh, many times on Google that um, searches for Jesus, prayer and the Bible are at record tendencies. And in fact, at one point, prayer early in March was the highest spiked search on the internet. Over 25% of all Americans have claimed that their faith in God has grown. And we know that 25% of the British population have been accessing churches online. Time for tea. By the end of March, half the entire globe will have prayed for the end of the pandemic. That's three and a half billion people praying in March alone that God would bring an end to the pandemic. Three and a half billion people calling out to a God. May they be Muslim, Hindu, Christian, or whatever. Crisis calls us to reach out to a loving God. So we're all dealing with different kinds of loss. Obviously, there's a loss to our rhythm of life and a loss to what we thought of as normal. And even the abnormal is becoming normal. And just as we're getting used to that, we're now having to get used to the idea of normal again, going to shops and some of us on the front line, the new normal has been over busy, work to the bone, trying to save the nation. Whether you've been in school or working for the NHS, maybe you've been getting lost in the emergency, maybe even losing a sense of yourself. And of course then, there's always the horrible spectre of bereavement that some of us have lost members of our families life goes on and some of us who are sick are still sick. People still have cancer. And how do we deal with all of that in the middle of a pandemic? And all the normal rituals of life, these rites of passage are disrupted and foreign and unfamiliar when they were distressing enough already without a pandemic. But even before then, we had other kinds of crises. We had Brexit, arguments about immigration. We had all those general elections. We were having to face society's uh, approach to gender inequality and the Me Too movement. Before that, we had the terrorism attacks uh, in London and in other places like Manchester. And now we've got COVID and even in the middle of COVID, we're having to face the innate racism in our nation, brought to us so clearly by the Black Lives Matters movement. 
And then we've got the future, haven't we? What's happening with the economy? What's happening with our jobs? So much to lose. So much loss. And so we find ourselves returning to the creator once again, the one who made us, the one who knows how we tick. As Peter said to Jesus, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. He knows how he made us, so we trust that maybe he'll know how to keep us. I don't believe that we were built for death and loss and grieving. I believe that we were made for life. To walk with God and to know him intimately and to manage and nurture this wonderful planet. That's certainly what Genesis seems to suggest. But now we're living in this broken environment for sin and death and pain. We're not made for it. And yet, God so lovingly, carefully created us. He so over-engineered us. He's made us resilient enough to cope with all the sadness, loss and pain. I mean, we are fish out of water. We shouldn't be able to survive. But he's made us so well, so resilient. And so we come back to him, the designer. Maybe he can make sense of it all. Especially when the environment becomes so toxic for us, we feel overwhelmed and unable to cope. Although, if we never left the side, I'm sure it'd be easier. <laughs>